What's going on guys? We've got another video today. This time we're diving deeper into our unit on ecosystems. Today we're going to be talking about carrying capacity, limiting factors, density dependent, density independent, limiting factors, biodiversity, a lot of good stuff. So let's get after it. All right. So ecosystem, this is review. Remember, an ecosystem is the interactions between the living and non-living things in an environment, right? So the organisms with their physical environment. Let's write it down real quick. So an ecosystem, remember, is the interaction, interaction between organisms, organisms, and their, their physical physical environment. Bam. All right. Interactions between organisms. Remember, guys, organisms are living things. So we're talking about plants and animals, microorganisms too, bacteria, anything that's alive, that's an organism. And the interaction between that and their physical environment. Remember, physical environment, we're talking about um, non-living things. Physical environment, we're talking about non-living things. So two new, two new vocab words to kind of be more specific when we're talking about this is uh, biotic factors and abiotic factors, right? Bio, if you guys remember, bio means life. So biology, the study of life. Biotic factors are the living things in an ecosystem. And abiotic factors are the opposite of living, non-living things in an ecosystem, right? So biotic factors are the living things. So those are the organisms, right? And abiotic factors, we're talking about the physical environment, the non-living things, okay? So bio, life, bio, biotic factors, our living parts, these are the whoop, living parts of an ecosystem. So EX, for example, living things could be plants, they could be animals, and even micro organisms. Right? Those are bacteria and stuff, right? Microorganisms. I think that's two of those. I'm pretty sure. Microorganisms. All right? Those are living things. The non-living things, the abiotic factors, remember, are the non-living parts. Non-living parts of an ecosystem. Can you guys think of any non-living things in an ecosystem? Yeah. Could be things like light. Could be sunlight. Right? Non-living. Could be soil, water. Soil, water. The gases in the air that make up the air, we would be talking about um, carbon and molecules, right? We're gonna talk about the carbon cycle in another video. Um, could also be rocks, could be all this stuff, right? A lot of non-living things. And the way that the biotic and abiotic factors interact, okay, that's explaining ecosystems, and they kind of have depend, or they kind of um, determine something called the biodiversity. The way they interact together kind of determine the amount of biodiversity in the ecosystem. Again, bio, let's break down the word. Bio means life, diversity, you've probably heard that word before. Diversity means like variety, differences, right? So what biodiversity is, different types of life, different types of life, okay? So biodiversity is variety, the differences, variety. Vari, vari, I suppose. Variety of living things in an ecosystem. Boom. Variety, the difference is variety, lots of different types, right? So I always say this in my classroom when I'm doing this, these notes. When I talk about biodiversity and we're sitting in a classroom of 30 students or whatever, the biodiversity in that classroom is pretty low, right? Because there's only one type of life. We're all human beings, right? That's one type of life. Biodiversity, not that much variety. Unless I'm um, just counting like the bacteria that hang out in the room. But for the most part, pretty low. How do we increase the biodiversity? How do we increase the amount of living things in the classroom? You can bring in plants, you can bring in animals, you can bring in cats and dogs, right? Different types of life. You start increasing the biodiversity in the classroom, right? Different types of life, the variety of types in an ecosystem. All right? So we talked about living things, non-living things, how they affect biodiversity, what an ecosystem is. But this video is really going to be focusing on... Um, you know, is there a limit to populations? And before we go to that, I have to clarify what I mean when a population. I use that word a lot, but what is a population? A population is members of all the same species, right? So you can have a human population, you can have a rhino population, giraffe population, grasshopper population, butterfly population, whatever. They're all members of the same species. That's what a population is. And the question is, do populations 
grow forever? Can they grow forever? For example, in 1950, there were like 2.5 billion people on Earth. That's a pretty big number. But today there's 7.5 billion people. That's crazy. It's like so many more people. Are we gonna continue to grow that fast forever? Or are we gonna hit, hit, hit a limit? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the carrying capacity. What is carrying capacity? The carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals that a population can support, right? So carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals. So I'm just abbreviating individual. Individuals, a population can support, right? Maximum number of individuals that a population can support. So if you've ever been into like a gymnasium or basketball gym or a multi-purpose room or something, and when you walk in, you see next to the door, there's like a plaque on the door that says uh, maximum capacity is like 500 people or whatever it is. That means that's the limit. 500 people is the limit of the highest number of people that can fit inside that room. Carrying capacity is the same thing. It's the limit. It's the number of individuals that a population can support. So let's graph it and make it visual and maybe it'll make more sense. So remember, two things you always look at when you first look at a graph. You look for a title, right? That's the first thing. I have no title on this one. Maybe my title is the carrying capacity. Second thing you do is you look at the axes because you really want to understand what the axes are before you can understand what the graph is trying to tell you. So Y to the sky, remember here's our Y axis. This is the number of individuals. On our X axis, we have time. So we're graphing uh, the number of individuals over time. Time is our independent variable. Number of individu individuals is our dependent variable. This depends on the time, All right? So maybe we'll talk about population of deer. I don't know. All right? So maybe the population was very low at one point and it started to increase really, really rapidly. And then this happened. It leveled off. Right? So we see that the deer, there weren't very many deer at the beginning of time and it increased, increased really, really fast. So it means birth rate is higher than death rate. And all of a sudden, boom, it plateaued, it hit a limit. That limit, what's that called? Yeah. It reached its carrying capacity. So at this point on the graph right here, the deer population reached its carrying Capacity reached its carrying capacity, right? It kind of hit the limit. So something happened here that didn't let these pop populated deer continue to grow and keep going, 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 right? So my question back to humans, if this was like 2.5 billion years ago, maybe this is 1950, and this is today, 19, or 2020, are we going to continue to grow forever? Or are humans going to reach a limit at some point? What would cause that limit? What would set this carrying capacity? The things that set carrying capacity are called limiting factors. Limiting factors set where this carrying capacity is, right? Depending on the limiting factors, this carrying capacity could be lower or it could be higher, but it all depends. So what are some examples of carrying capacity? Could you be thinking of resources? Maybe there's not enough food, water, shelter for all living things, right? Maybe humans, there's not enough food at some point and we're going to hit a limit. I don't know, right? So carrying capacity could be things like resources, could be things like competition, could be big things like natural disasters. Let's talk about some of those, right? So limiting factors. Right? These set the limit. Limit factors set the limit or the boundary. Right? And there are conditions. So the definition is like conditions that cause a population to be maintained. Oops, forgot the idea there. Maintain. Set, uh, conditions that cause a population to be maintained, right? It really sets that limit where that carrying capacity is going to be, right? So, um, populations can increase. Increase means go up or decrease, go down. based on availability of, okay, so populations can keep growing really, really fast. Birth rates will be higher than death rates, right? Or vice versa, death rates may be higher than birth rates and it will decrease depending on the availability of things like whew, water. Is there enough water for everybody? Right? Some resources. Is there enough water for everybody? Is there enough food? Is there enough shelter? Right? Is there a high amount of competition? 
Is there a disease? And a bunch of stuff could set these limits. And right? populations, for the most part, don't grow forever. This is called a logistic growth curve, right? It's because it grows really rapidly, but then hits a limit. That's logistic growth versus exponential growth would mean just keeps going really, really fast, faster, faster, faster every single time, right? But most populations follow, follow logistic growth for the most part. All right, back to that human being question. Are we gonna hit, reach a carrying capacity? Way back in the beginning of human evolution, right? We were hunter-gatherers. We followed our animals around to hunt them. But then we became more sedentary. We weren't so nomadic anymore. We came up with agriculture, right? We started to have farms, raise livestock, and we were able to have more individuals in our population because we could feed more people, right? That was ingenious, right? We were in innovative. The question is, are we going to be innovative to keep growing or are we going to hit a limit at some point today, right? We still farm today. We have farms next to each other. But what if... Right? We start to stack farms. What if we go vertical rather than sideways or horizontal? What if we had vertical farms? Wouldn't that be cool? We'd have a lot more space and a lot more farms could feed more people. So as long as we're innovative, we could probably change this carrying capacity for human beings. I don't know. Let's see what happens, right? All right, so limiting factors. Set the carrying capacity. Now let's talk about two types of limiting factors. We're going to talk about density-dependent and density-independent limiting factors. All right, so I'm going to do some racing. All right, so remember, carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals that a population can support. So it's like the limit. And a limit is set by limiting factors. And there's two types of limiting factors I want to talk about. Density dependent and independent. Before we talk about density independent and all this stuff, we got what is density, right? I'm just using this word. We got to just kind of go over it real quick. So density, density. So density means like, how closely compact something is. So if you think of a rock, it's way more dense than air, right? We can move through air, we can't move through a rock because the molecules are so dense, they're so tightly packed and close together. So I'm gonna do an example. I'm gonna draw three boxes. Here we go. We got box A, we got box B, and we got box C. C. And within these boxes, we got some dots. We got four dots. Okay, so here's box A, here's box B, Here's box C. Right? Out of these four boxes, which of these boxes has the dots that are most dense? Box C. Yeah, box C. Why? Because look how closely together they are. Right? They're really compact. That means the higher density. Which box is the least dense, the most spread out? That would be box A. Right? So now that we know what density means, let's talk about the two types of limiting factors. We have density dependent depends on the density. We have density independent, doesn't depend on the density, right? So we've got ba -ba -ba, density dependent limiting factors. Boop, 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 boop. And the opposite, we've got density independent. Density independent, independent limiting factors. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right. So density dependent, density independent limiting factors. Remember, density dependent depends on the density. Density independent doesn't care about the density. Right? So these guys over here are going to have really big impacts on a population the more individuals and the more compact that population is. Versus density independent doesn't care if there's like one animal in the population or a bunch of animals in the population. It right? doesn't care if it's box A or box C. It's going to have the same effect no matter what. These guys are going to have a bigger impact on box C because they're, they're closer together. There's more of them, right? So density dependent has a higher impact. Higher impact right, with a higher density. Higher impact with a higher density. So these guys have a big impact on box C versus density impact, uh, density independent has same effect, ooh, effect is it affect or effect? I'm not sure. All right, not teaching English, but here we go. Same effect whether population is concentrated 
or not. Doesn't matter, doesn't care, right? So density dependent, higher impact uh, with a higher density. So those are, really think of resources for the most part, right? So let's do examples. So example EX, some examples of density dependent would be things like food, things like water, right? Maybe even competition. And this is a kind of funny one, even disease. Disease is density uh, dependent. Disease, right? So food, water, I always say, if we had one person in this classroom and one hamburger to feed that person, that person would be completely fine, right? Be, be happy. Could eat that hamburger, would be fine. But if there's 30 people in this classroom and one hamburger, not everybody's gonna get food, right? So it depends on the density. It depends on how many individuals are in that classroom, how compact it is. Um, disease is a cool one. So right now I'm shooting this video during the craziness of COVID-19, right? That's a virus. And we're practicing social distancing. We're staying away from each other, right? So we're doing box A right now. These are people staying away from each other, not letting that disease spread. But if we were compact and the density was really close, COVID-19, that disease is gonna spread super easily. So that would be a density dependent limiting factor. Whoa, crazy, all right? Versus density independent limiting factor, doesn't depend if they're close together or far apart. It's kind of the same effect. So these are things like, like storms and natural disasters, right? So you're gonna write EX example. We've got storms, we've got natural disasters, right? So if you're a population of deer living in a forest, if there's one deer in that forest or 100 deer in that forest or 200 deer in that forest or 3,000 deer in that forest and there's a forest fire that burns down that entire forest, it doesn't matter how many deer were there. They're all going to be gone, right? So that's independent of the density. It doesn't matter if there's one deer or 100 deer in that forest. The whole thing gets burned down by a forest fire, a big natural disaster. It doesn't depend on the density. All right, guys. So that was a lot. Hopefully it helped. Remember, we talked about living things, non-living things, biotic and abiotic factors. We talked about biodiversity, the amount of different types of life. We talked about limiting factors and carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the limit, right? Limiting factors set that limit. We talked about density dependent, independent limiting factors. Hope that was helpful. Work hard, get smart. See you guys next time.